Hello, it's Chris here and welcome back to the How to Become an iOS Developer series. Now, if you've missed the last few videos, I'll link to them in the description. This is video number four and we're going to talk about how to get a job in the iOS industry. And to be honest, I've been out of the job industry for a long time. That's why I had to collaborate with someone who is in the thick of it. You might remember Ali, who was an intern with us a few years ago. Well, he's graduating now, and he already secured a job at a company whose core product is an app with over 16 million monthly active users. Now, this isn't luck that he landed this job. When he shared his job hunting process with me, I was surprised at how meticulous it was. With details such as which resume formats to use, how to bypass the popular job sites and go straight into the box of the recruiter, what technical skills to study for and how to behave in interviews among many more tips. Now in this video, I want to share some of those practical tips with you. Let's dive right in. So there are five major areas to landing the job. Here's what they are. Here's the order you should do them in. And I'll tell you why in just a second. So number one is resume development, then online presence, applications, technical skills and soft skills. All right. So why this specific order? Well, that's because this journey is intended to be taken after graduating from our launch your first app program. You don't have to go through our specific program, but before you get to this career stuff, you should have the foundational iOS skills and you should have a few projects under your belt so that there's something to put on your resume. That's why we can start with resume development and online presence. Now, another question is why would we start applying to jobs before making sure that we have solid technical and soft skills? In reality, the application process takes a long time and you might be applying to many positions before even landing an interview. So the timeline really looks like this, where you're applying to jobs while studying for technical questions and working on your soft skills. Now that you know what the five areas are, let's dive a little deeper into each area, starting with resume development. Now let's start with format and structure. Some people do two column resumes. Some people do a single column. Some people do multiple pages where some people condense everything into a single page and then don't even get started on colors and fonts. So what is best? Well, first you have to understand that recruiters can get hundreds of resumes. So they actually use an automated resume screening software to sift through and filter out candidates to a more manageable number. Your first task is to make sure your resume is legible to a computer. If you use fancy formatting, your application might not even make it through the screening process. Regarding colors, color theory states that certain colors convey different moods. For example, red is often associated with being bold and yellow is seen as bright and happy. These are all things to consider and that's why structure and formatting is important. Next, let's talk about experience points development. This is the work experience, your personal projects, the meat of your resume. Obviously, you want to have as much relevant experience as possible, but if this is your very first job, then you should have relevant personal projects that you've worked on. Furthermore, you should write your points in this format as much as possible. The what, how, why, and impact method. Here's an example. Developed a using to allow leading to. Now let's fill it in. Developed a service using Python and AWS to allow for the automated syncing of production databases leading to a less than 1% discrepancy in databases. Now you may not know the impact of your work all the time, but wherever you can use hard numbers and facts and stats that makes your experience more impactful. But you know, I also have to caution against embellishing too much because you need to be able to talk about each point in great detail during the interview. So make sure what you're writing is absolutely true and that you can back it up. Next, let's talk about online presence. At a minimum, you should have a LinkedIn and GitHub profile. For your LinkedIn, fill it out as thoroughly as possible and get recommendations from coworkers and friends. For GitHub, you'll want to put your personal projects on there, but make sure the code is well documented and that the project is organized. Otherwise, this could backfire on you. And as for personal websites with a resume slash portfolio, this is a nice to have where you can show off your projects and resume, but it's not absolutely necessary. If this is something you want to do, think about using a website builder to quickly set one up such as Wix or, you know, all the usual suspects, but there's one I discovered recently, which is pretty easy to set up a one pager. It's called card.co and it's spelled oddly C A R R D dot C O. Okay. Now let's talk about applications. Aside from using the big job sites like Indeed and Monster that might have many applicants going after the same job postings, you can also apply directly on a company's website. And even better, if there are 
particular companies you really want to work for, you can use a bunch of different techniques to find the email addresses of the head recruiter and email them directly. And there are techniques and strategies to this. Once you start getting replies from recruiters, you want to make sure that you're responding in a way that doesn't raise any red flags. So these are things like responding promptly, using professional language, not saying anything weird, and then also knowing when to follow up and what to say. I think this is mostly common sense, but I've learned not to assume anything. Now, this last area isn't something that I even realize that you have to do, but I guess you have to apply to so many different jobs these days just to land a few interviews. You need a way to track the status of each of your applications because you're going to be sending off many. You need to see which ones need following up on, which ones are dead ends and so on. Tracking also gives you confidence because you'll begin to see patterns in numbers. Like on average, you get one interview, seven rejections and 22 no answers for every 30 applications you send. Now I'm just making those numbers up, but once you see it that way, then it takes the emotion out of it and you know it's just a numbers game. You know it's just a matter of time if you keep at it. All right, let's move on to technical skills. Now there are iOS specific skills that you need to know. These were covered in previous steps in the video series, but there are also more general computer science, software engineering type of skills you need, such as algorithms and data structures. These concepts are essential to software development, and there are websites you can use to study this stuff. Just search for algorithms and data structures on Google and YouTube. There are tons of videos covering these. The interviewer may also ask you some technical trivia. These are general knowledge questions such as what's the difference between a git fetch and a git pull. Now, luckily, again, there are websites with lists of these types of questions that you can study. And then lastly, this is the most scary part, the live coding slash problem solving part. For this, the interviewer wants to see you code or reason out the solution to a problem. Again, there's a pool of common problems and solutions that you can study and practice on websites such as LeetCode and HackerRank. Now the last part, soft skills, this is so important because if you are not good at this part, you might not even get through the first phase of the interview. Let's start with project background and explanation. This is very important because it usually happens even before the technical interview. The interviewer may pick apart your resume asking specific questions about your work experience. And if you can't answer confidently and in detail, it might raise some red flags as to whether or not it you actually did those things. What is a lie? What is truth? If you give the interviewer any doubt, you're out the door. So know your resume points inside and out. Next, behavioral questions. These are lists of common behavior questions that you can study from websites. These are things that look at how you would act in various difficult scenarios. It also gives the interviewer a sense of whether or not you'll fit into their team culture. And then there's general communication. This part talks about how to conduct yourself during an interview because Communication isn't just verbal. There's a huge nonverbal component, such as how you look, how you smell, how you carry yourself, how you greet someone, how you respond under stress and things like that. So if this stuff doesn't come natural to you, definitely look it up, study it, practice it. Now, I'm sorry that I was only able to briefly touch on each area, but in reality, Ali and I are still working on it. Our goal is to produce a hands-on practical program that people can follow to find a job in the industry. And this job ready program is going to be part of our CWC plus membership. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.